about 29 people were killed in the Atlanta area between 1979 and 1981, and it seemed like they were all connected. All of the victims were African-American boys. The vast majority were teenagers or younger, with some even being children. As a result of this, the community began to refer to the murders as the Atlanta Child Murders. The character Wayne Williams from the second season of Netflix's Mindhunter was jailed in Atlanta in 1981 for the murders of two young men. However, it wasn't long before people began to speculate that the Atlanta Child Murders were just the beginning of his bloody trail. There is still some doubt as to whether Wayne Williams was indeed responsible for the Atlanta child killings or whether he was only a convenient police scapegoat, despite the fact that his arrest and conviction for two killings corresponded with the end of the reign of terror over Atlanta. Atlanta is the place of Wayne Bertram Williams' birth on May 27, 1958. Williams, the sole child of two educators, did exceptionally well in school. His peers and educators praised his intelligence, calling him a virtual genius. His effort to launch a radio station from his parents' basement was indicative of his enterprising nature. After being featured in Jet, he experienced a momentary burst of popularity. After completing his high school education at Douglas in 1976, young Wayne Williams enrolled in Georgia State University, where he lasted for one year before dropping out. The once promising young guy appeared to start drifting aimlessly after that. By the time he was 23, he had already worked in radio, produced records, and scouted for new talent. Williams eventually tried his hand at freelancing as a photographer. Williams had lofty professional aspirations, but his work was never successful. The money his parents spent supporting his goals led them to declare bankruptcy. A longtime neighbor of the Williamses reportedly told FBI officials that the local youth mistook Wayne Williams for a police officer because of his mannerisms and the fact that he wore a badge. Two or three years ago, many of them began to think he was going crazy. A neighbor who asked not to be named stated that the man would approach children in official-looking vehicles and warn them to get off the roadway or face jail time. On May 22, 1981, everything began to go downhill. Police officers on patrol on a bridge over the Chattahoochee River at 3 a.m. that day pulled over Wayne Williams, who was driving his automobile. They let him go, but they promised they'd come back. Two days after police questioned Williams, Williams's body was found downstream from where they had been. Nathaniel Cater, 27. It was thought to be connected to the recent murder spree that had gripped the city. The Atlanta child murders now have a new suspect in Wayne Williams. A 14-year-old and a 13-year-old kid went missing in Atlanta within three days of one other, they were the first victims of the Atlanta child murders. On July 28, 1979, their bodies were discovered next to each other by the side of a road. One was killed by gunfire, and the other, by suffocation. From that point on, the body count only rose. Six people had been confirmed dead by March 1980. Local Atlanta authorities were left frustrated after following up on every possible lead in the investigation of the Atlanta child murders. The FBI had to become involved before too long. John Douglas, a well-known FBI profiler, shared his thoughts on a possible murderer profile for the Atlanta murders. He had already devoted a large portion of his career to conducting in-depth interviews with notorious criminals like James Earl Ray, David Berkowitz, aka Son of Sam, and Richard Speck. As a result, Douglas's suspicions in this instance were not unexpected. Douglas, the character's inspiration on Mindhunter, wrote that the perpetrator in the Atlanta child murders case files was probably black. He speculated that the Atlanta murderer would need covert access to the black community in order to prey on black youngsters. Many of the remains connected to the case were found in the same general area by late May of 1981. The Chattahoochee River was scouted out by detectives after bodies were recovered from its waters. They located Wayne Williams at that time, and he was located not too far from where Cater's body was found. The body of 21-year-old Jimmy Ray Payne was discovered close by, presumably helping police with their investigation. About a month after the deaths were found, 
on June 21, law enforcement finally apprehended suspect Wayne Williams. After a failed polygraph and flimsy alibi, he was taken into custody. Fibers were also taken from Williams' vehicle and family dogs by the police. Cater and Payne both had the same fibers on their bodies. FBI profiler John Douglas identified a compelling motive for Williams, adding to the growing body of evidence. Douglas hypothesized that Williams' suicide stemmed from his feeling of helplessness in the face of his many setbacks in life. It's possible that the murders restored some measure of power to him. After observing Williams' trial, Douglas determined that he is very much like other serial killers researched and interviewed in the past by the FBI's Behavioral Sciences Unit. According to the FBI agent's notes, Williams seemed to enjoy the spotlight cast by the murder investigation, suggesting that he was seeking attention. Douglas pointed out that Williams, like many serial killers, believed he would never be brought to justice. As support for Wayne Williams's case waned, however, his cool attitude began to crack. During Williams' cross-examination, Douglas suggested that the prosecution highlight his mistakes and contradictory testimony. Williams grew combative after this strategy was employed, labeling the prosecutor a fool. Williams reacted defensively, no, when questioned by the prosecutor if he had been instructed for his testimony. To find the genuine Wayne Williams, you must write where you need him to be. Wayne Bertram Williams was found guilty of killing Payne and Cater in February 1982 and sentenced to two consecutive life terms in prison. Williams was never found guilty of the other Atlanta child murders, despite police allegations to the contrary. Most of the murders attributed to Williams were never solved, despite the fact that FBI profiler John Douglas had linked Williams to nearly a dozen of them. When Williams was arrested, the killing stopped, but the absence of evidence led many to believe he was innocent. Since his incarceration many years ago, Wayne B. Williams has maintained his innocence. Williams acknowledged that God had a plan for him and that he was at peace with his situation in a 1991 interview. But in 1994, Williams wrote a letter pleading his case to the parole board. Right and wrong, guilt and innocence don't always matter, but how we respond to adversity and learn from our mistakes does. My life is a textbook case of wasted potential. Now all I want is the chance to prove myself worthy of the trust that was once placed in me. Some locals in Atlanta, including some of the victim's loved ones, have doubts about Wayne Williams' guilt in the Atlanta child murders. Payne Lindsay and Donald Albright, the filmmakers behind the film, gathered evidence and conducted interviews to determine if Williams was the Atlanta child serial killer. This work was done as part of the Atlanta Monster podcast, which explores the nearly 40-year-old case over the course of 10 episodes. The victim's loved ones are the ones who claim they don't believe he's responsible. Albright stated, they don't feel like their child was ever given justice. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation GBI, may have covered up information that may have linked a member of the Ku Klux Klan to the murders, according to a bombshell story published in Spin magazine. However, the GBI kept this information secret so as to avoid racial unrest. Williams' attorneys have claimed that his arrest was politically motivated since authorities finally had a suspect in their search for the murderer, a black man, and could finally put an end to the case. When DNA forensics were applied to the hairs found at the Atlanta crime site in 2010, they bolstered the initial case and added new layers of complexity to the investigation. The initial investigators are still convinced that Williams is responsible for the Atlanta child murders. Wayne Williams, meanwhile, passes the time behind bars. Even though Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms started a new inquiry into the murders in 2019, he has been denied parole on many occasions. A parole board official has claimed that the earliest the board can postpone Williams' parole hearing is November 2027, 